Christian greetings to you, brother and sisters, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. God has been gracious to us. God has granted us many of his benefits. And we praise his holy name that we still even have the breath of life. Now this moment, allow me to bring you the word of God. My name is Pastor Nicholas Bitamaziri. And today our journey takes us again to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 2. And my subject of contemplation with you is entitled The Right Attitude. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 2, the Bible says a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. You see here, the author of the scripture, the wise man, brings to us a dichotomy between two persons, the wise man on one hand and the foolish man on the other hand and he describes the location of their hearts. The wise man's heart is on the right, well, as the foolish man's heart is on the left. Of course, brother and sister, you would recognize that this is a figurative representation of the fact. But what the author seeks to establish here is, often the right hand is a hand of strength and victory and success. A wise man's heart is at the right hand, Whatever he does, he does it with all his heart. He does not do it in a reluctant manner. The foolish man's heart is at the left hand because when he does what he does, he does it half-heartedly. In many languages, the right hand becomes and is a symbol of skill or success. No doubt because the right hand is often used naturally by many people. Even God is described in the scriptures as employing the right hand in adjudication of the matters on behalf of his people. In Psalms 110 verse 5, the Bible says the Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. In Psalms 118 verse 15, the Bible says glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. And in verse 16 of the same chapter, the Bible says the right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. So you can establish here that the right hand of God is described as performing valiant acts. And these acts, therefore, are acts of victory. And the man who abides in God is able to live victorious and successful life because the right hand of God is with him. In fact, in the book of Psalms, chapter 20, verse 6, the Bible says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. So the right the hand often of God describes God's strength, power, and victory that he exercises on behalf of his people. And so the side of the right hand is a stride of strength, is a side of victory, and is a side of application. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, the Bible says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Shiloh to which you are going. You see, the Bible invites us to do whatever we do with all our might, with all our strength, with everything we have with every breath, every beat of ounce that there is in our body. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, the Bible says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. 
You see, God invites us to a complete life of devotion, a complete life of passion and dedication and delight in service. In Deuteronomy 10 verse 12, the Bible says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. The key element there is all with all your heart, with all your soul. A man must learn to serve God with devotion, with commitment, with everything that he or she has. This is ably demonstrated by the life of Amaziah in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 1 to 2. The Bible says Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehohadan of Jerusalem and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a royal heart. You see here, this man did what was right, but the problem with him is that when he did what he did, he did not do it with a royal heart, with devotion, with dedication, with delight in the Lord. He accomplished the task, but not with the right attitude. Brother and sisters, God is not only interested in us accomplishing our tasks, but is interested also in the attitude with which we accomplish that task, because often attitude is altitude. You can rise as far as your attitude is concerned. Yes, my friend, my brother and my sister, whatever you do, do it with heart. If you are going to serve the Lord, do it with joy and excitement and delight. Don't make a Christian life a sad story, a sad experience. Make it something worthwhile. Whatever you do, do it with excitement and with delight. It was John, the apostle of Jesus in 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 who said, and this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and that his commandments are not burdensome. It is God's delight that we serve him with passion, that we serve him with great delight, that his call, his words, his ordinances, his statutes, and everything that he has given to us is not burdensome, but that it is a delight to us and that whatever we do, we cherish that which God has established. Yes, the psalmist in Psalms 19 says in verse 10, in fact, he says in verse 9, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I want to submit to you that a man of God, a wise man, take delight in in the way of the Lord, in the will of the Lord, and that distinguishes him from the rest, and that even becomes him as a man of wisdom, because his heart is on the right hand. I don't know, my brother and my sister, how you live and serve the Lord. But this is what I'm simply saying, that whatever you do, whether it's your work, whether it is your relationship, whether it is, uh, it is anything to serve the Lord, to worship, to study the Word of God, do it with passion, do it with the right attitude, and I guarantee you that you will not be like Amaziah, who did what was right but not with a royal heart. May God grant us the privilege to serve him him with the royal heart, a heart that is devoted to him, to love him with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our might. This is the charge of God to you and to me, and this is the gem and the insight of the wise man today into our lives. I pray that God will grant us to live successful lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen, brother and sister, this day.